Tuesday, March 21st. We wake up at 2 a.m. to go to the airport, feeling very tired, and the remnants of the feelings we had the day before. Excitement. Curiosity. Nerves. Will I be able to do this? How hard will this be? This has to go well. But, despite all of our nerves and fear of the unknown, we take off anyway, committing to this new experience. Some of us hoping it'll be good, some of us expecting it. So, after about two hours and a half, we land in Vegas, we rent our vehicle, and we submit to whatever these next five days have in store. What was it like having to wake up super early every morning? It was horrible. Like, it is so tiring, but it's, I, I think it's worth it. When you're sitting there in the church at like around 4 or 5 a.m., chatting with the monks, and then you realize when you mention some of the words from the morning phrases where it says, my eyes have reached the morning watch, I might meditate on all your words, etc., etc. The words start to have more meaning when you realize that there's more effort that's required from you to wake up. It's it's honestly, like, really hard, like, waking up 3 a.m., like, showing off like that dedication like and like truthfully like giving it up to God. Once you get past the tired part, it's it's honestly refreshing. You get to be out before the lights out and you get to you get to take a nice early blessing, you get to go pray and then after you get blessed by the sunrise. So after we've woken up at the crack of dawn and went through two hours of morning prayers, we get about five hours of rest and meditation to rejuvenate ourselves and get ourselves ready for the rest of the day. If you could describe this trip in one word, what would it be? I'd say probably peaceful. Peaceful because uh, like you're surrounded by nature all around you and like there's no pollution, there's not that many people here. So you can really feel like peace, whether it's in the church or as you're just walking around watching the sunrise, sunset, the stars. With the five hours that we got of just quiet meditation, you really, I could find myself just sitting outside or sitting in this very church, just reading in absolute silence. It's a weird, it's, it feels unnatural to begin with, but our lives are sometimes like so busy that when we just, you just come out here where there's absolutely no sound. There's no people around you except the howling of the wind as it blows across your face. There's this real sense of peace that you can't get from city life. And I think that's what I'm going to take with me. So now I'm going to walk you through what the rest of our day in the monastery would have looked like. So after our five hours of rest and meditation, we went to the liturgy. We broke our fast at around mid-afternoon. And after that comes what many of us thought to be the funnest part of the day, the work. So we did some draws while we were, while we were here. Uh, what would you say is your favorite one? I would say the bookstore. Some, some of the things you do in there are a little bit tedious, but it's a very different pace from what normal jobs are. Most jobs are like fast paced, hard working, and it requires a lot of effort into it. Personally, it comes down to two. First one is working in the kitchen, and the second one is moving the moving chairs to the uh, to the scrapyard. The truck didn't have enough space for us to sit in it, so we kind of had to like fit 20 people in the back of the truck, and it was like very fun. We started singing like praise praises, and it was like it was a really good time. <laughs> in the mornings, that's why I praise you. In the evening, that's why I praise you. <laughs> also, we ended up dropping off the chairs by uh, a place where we met four dogs, super playful dogs, and they were adorable. So we got to play with the dogs as well. I think my favorite thing was probably helping with the the bunnies. I love playing with the bunnies, and I also went in and collected some eggs from the chicken coop, and I put away an escaped duck that went into the chicken coop and we put them back in the duck cage. Farming, it was like, it, you, you're giving service like to the church and like the monastery and like uh, you're, you're like providing like for the like food and everything. 
and you're like helping like so they can prepare the food for the kitchen so it's like it, it was like a really good experience and the person that was leading it was was even giving us like uh, lessons as well as he was letting us farm so it was, it was really nice well i liked you doing handiwork with uh Kronos. he we did a bunch of stuff for the scrapyard uh for like cars cages and a bunch of stuff so after two hours of hard but fun work, we would have about a one hour talk from the monks, a quick snack for dinner, and then we would go to sleep, getting ready to continue this routine the next day. Would you recommend this trip? Oh yes, I absolutely highly recommend it. Yeah, like 100% I would. Oh for sure, yes, 100%. Yes, I, I would recommend it to everyone. Of course, it, come on. <laughs> It's a great experience. You should you should totally do it. If there was one thing you could take away from this trip to maybe benefit yourself in your regular life, what do you think that would be? Um, I think it's just a matter of giving more priority to your spiritual life. Like, if there's things distracting you, put that to the side. Try it. It's really based on focus. And also, I'd also say for myself, it's almost distracting yourself in a good sense because if you are not doing anything productive, you will get very bored and you may tend to think of stuff that you don't want to think of. So distracting yourself with whatever it may be, it's good to distract yourself with praising the Lord and McVeigh and all that, but I think that's the main thing that I took out of it, being able to go on the path of the Lord, try to get to the kingdom of heaven. To do that, try to make your time more productive. Being on a routine and managing your time well is crucial. Something I noticed is that we were a lot more efficient during this trip because we were on a tight schedule and we had a routine for every single day. So I think it's really important to have that type of routine to maintain some type of flow in your life. There is a very set schedule and there's very set priorities that they have. And I think the other two is how to be resourceful or how to be efficient with time. Because when you go through the days, you notice that monks throughout these days are very, very barely wasting any time. They really try to make use out of every single day. The understanding of the spiritual connections and the more in-depth detail that the monastery provides and and the, the reasons why you have a more in-depth spiritual connection with God. The sermons were all very, very, uh, very like helpful like towards our lives, each, each and every one. Everything about it is a blessing. The fact that we were able to come up here and just benefit from the way that the monks live, this new experience that we get to gain, and I think it. I think everyone should have the chance to do something like this. I think I speak for all of us when I say that this was a truly blessed trip. We isolated ourselves from the world and we surrounded ourselves with God's never-ending love and beauty. We enjoyed it. We struggled at times, but even for those of us who struggled the most, we can't say that we weren't impacted. The memories from this unforgettable trip will always live on within us and will become a part of the journey that is our lives and our spiritual life with God. Throughout this documentary, I've been leading you through our experience, but I think right now might be a good time to tell you about my experience. For this trip, I was scared, scared of the struggle of how long and far away it'd be from home, what I was leaving behind. And at the start, it was hard. I wasn't happy there. But by the end of the trip, I couldn't say that I didn't benefit. I couldn't say that I wouldn't remember this trip for the rest of my life, that I didn't grow from it. And as we were driving to the airport, I looked back on the trip and I looked into the future with optimism as we were coming home from this trip with a new perspective on life. على الفرصة الحلوة اللي كنا فيها مع الولاد تاني حاجة أحب أشكر الحياة كل أباء الدير دير الأمبنطونيوس بكاليفورنيا 
للمحبة اللي احنا شاهدناها فيهم وقد ايه كانوا قدموا لنا كل حب ومحبة حقيقية وكل اتضاع اشكر كمان صاحب الفكرة الاساسية لزيارة الدير وهو مش موجود معانا دلوقتي اخونا ايهاب خليل ربنا يجيبه لنا بالسلامة ويقعد معانا على طول كمان اللي احيا الفكرة من جديد اشكر نرمين لان هي اللي من مدة قالت لي يا ريت نرجع الفكرة وقالت لي انا متعهدة بالفند ريزين وقامت بمجهود جامد هي والولاد ربنا يعوضهم كل خير كمان مش عايزة انسى شكر من القلب للدكتور ماجد ميخائيل اللي الحقيقة قدم لنا كل مساعدة سواء في حجز التذاكر او في السيتس وكان معانا الحقيقة حتى خمسة الصبح واحنا راجعين من الدير معانا وبيتابعنا وبيتابع كل تحركاتنا كتر خيره وربنا عوضه خير اشكر ولادنا كلهم الحقيقة اللي كانوا على مستوى المسؤولية شكر خاص لجورج غبور والمكود اللي عمله في الـ في الدوكيومنتري اللي هو انتوا بتشوفوه دلوقتي مجهود رائع خالص ربنا يعوضه ما انساش معاه كمان اشكر اندرو يوسف لان هو وجورج قبلوا انهم يقعدوا في اوضه تانية وكتر خيرهم انهم سمعوا الكلام وقدموا كل محبه آه جورج الحقيقة قام بمجهود كبير لتوصيف كل الأحداث اللي حصلت في الدير وده كان الحقيقة مجهود كبير منه أشكر أندرو, أشكر أندرو طبعا إنه قبل إنه يقعد بعيد عننا رغم إنه كان معانا طول الوقت أشكر توني إنه كان إنسان وديع وهادي وبيسمع الكلام منظم في كل حاجة حلوة أشكر ماركوس إنسان هارد وركين كان بيشتغل بكل قلب وكل مكود وعرق وتعب معانا قوي وتعب في شغله قوي أو في الحاجات اللي كانوا بيقولوها له أشكر مارسلينو إنسان كان دايما مع ربنا وكان بيحاول يقضي كتير وقت في الكنيسة وكان بيسمع كلام أشكر فيلوباتير اللي كان إنسان ملتزم وكان بيساعد الاباء الكهنه حتى ما نساش موقفه في مساعده ابونا موسى لتغيير التاير اللي كان فلات في عربيته اشكر ماثيو انسان حلو خالص وعلى قد المسؤوليه ويا ما قدم لنا مساعده وكان معايا بيدور على المكان في الباركينج بكل اهتمام وكل احساس بالمسؤوليه اشكر يوسف آه يوسف مرقص اللي كان الحقيقه آه دايما منين ما اقول له اي حاجة يقول لي ثلاث مرات يا 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 وما يعملش حاجة بس كان انسان حلو وروحه حلوة ومبتسم ويضحك وكان مبسوط خالص وكان هو الفاكهة بتاعته مش عايز اكون نسيت حد اتمنى ان ان الرحلة او الوقت ده رغم ان احنا طبعا دي كانت اول تجربة لنا مع الولاد انما كلها مرت بسلام وكلنا انبسطنا خالص و ابونا موسى ساعدنا في زياره جميله خالص لل للمغاره اللي في الجبل وقدم لنا محبه كبيره كل الاباء الرهبان سواء الاب الراهب المسؤول عن المكتبه او المسؤول عن المطبخ كلهم كانوا الحقيقه حاجه مفرحه وحاجه تشجعنا ان احنا نروح الدير ده تاني مارسلينو كمان كتر خير انه كان هو يعني مساعد فيليب في الـ في, الـ في المرواح والمجاي كان كلكم على تعبكم قدمتم كل حاجة حلوة كنتوا مسؤولين كنتوا ولاد حلوين خالص ربنا يبارك فيكم ويفرح الكنيسة بيكم اشكر كل اللي ساعدنا في الكاربولينج كنتوا كلكم على مستوى المسؤولية ورتبتوا الكاربولينج بامتياز وبالاوقات والتوقيتات السليمة أه بطلب اخيرا من كل واحد يسامحني لو انا غلطت او عليت صوتي أه سامحوني كلكم كانت رحله مفرحه وربنا يفرحكم دايما ولالهنا كل مجد وكرامه من الان والابد امين